Everybody, welcome to System Crackers Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back again with another Friday stream where we get together as a community and talk about some kind of interesting topic, and this week is no different. Uh, and I would like to say thank you all for being here so far. I think that there's, you know, quite a bit of interest in today's topic, so I'm very excited about that. Um, so let's uh, get into the updates, first of all. Um, I I'm going to mention this a little bit later also, but I wanted to just point out once, one more time that there is a uh, new Mastodon instance for Emacs users. It's uh, emacs.ch. If you go check that out, there's a lot of Emacs users there. And if you're interested in what I talk about today about Mastodon, Activity Pub, the Fediverse, I definitely recommend joining uh, this particular instance if you want to talk to other people about Emacs, because there's a lot of people there who are actively contributing and more people joining every day. So definitely give that uh, instance a look if you uh, want to try out um, Mastodon or the Fediverse or Activity Pub for yourself. Uh, also, tomorrow is the final weekend of uh, the GitHub Game Off 2022 Game Jam, where I've been working on a 2D platformer game in my own scheme implementation, basically called Mesh. Uh, it hasn't really gone as well as I hoped, but I've also I've managed to, to write a lot of really interesting things for the language and the implementation. Uh, so at least I feel it's a, it's a win from that perspective. But we're going to try to finish out strong this weekend. I'll be streaming both on Saturday and Sunday around 11 a.m. UTC. And there'll be about four hour streams each. So if you're interested in uh, Lisp and live coding and game development, definitely come out and check out those streams. And we'll see what we can get done by the end there. Uh, Christine says, games are a great motivator to build systems. Yes, that's anytime I want to learn a new platform or framework or language, uh, usually it's a game. Um, I'm doing that with, which is a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, definitely join that. It's going to be on the Flux Harmonic uh, YouTube and Twitch channels. That's uh, youtube.com slash Flux Harmonic Live or twitch.tv slash Flux Harmonic Live. Uh, it won't be on this channel. So definitely uh, follow either of those uh, channels if you are interested in, in seeing the streams tomorrow. Um, also, uh, as I normally mention at this part of the stream, um, Mickey Peterson, the, authors, the author of Mastering Emacs, has uh, done a really nice thing for the channel where he set up a basically an affiliate link where if you uh, purchase his excellent book about Emacs, Mastering Emacs, with this particular link, masteringemacs.org slash r slash system crafters, uh, a portion of the, the proceeds of that goes to supporting the channel. Uh, it's a really good book. It goes into a lot more depth on some aspects of Emacs that I haven't gotten a chance to cover on this channel. So if you want another really good resource to learn about Emacs, definitely you can't go wrong with uh, Mastering Emacs. Also worth mentioning that since today is Black Friday, the you know uh, capitalist holiday of the year, uh, the most capitalist holiday of the year, I guess you could say, uh, the book is 20% off. So if you haven't picked it up yet, you've been sort of been on the fence because you're not sure if you want to spend the money on it, 20% uh, off might help you make your mind up on that. But uh, definitely a good way to help the channel and also a really excellent book that uh, gets updated every time a new version of Emacs gets released. So give that a look if you're interested. Um, before I get started, I'd like to go ahead and say hello to all the people who have joined so far. Uh, Minas Mazar, Jean, uh, Christine, who I'll speak about in a moment as well. Uh, Eugene, Fikri, uh, Gun, Purple G, Christian, uh, Marcel, uh, Arpana, uh, One All of the Above, Kinjal, uh, Daigo, uh, and Fade. Nice to see you. Thanks for, thanks for joining. So we have a uh, special guest in the house today. Uh, Christine Limmer Weber, who is one of the authors and editors of the Activity Pub specification, which we'll be talking about in a moment. Uh, really cool to have Christine here to correct me whenever I go off track or go wrong on what things I'll be discussing, because I've only really been using uh, the Fediverse seriously for about a week now, but I've been sort of a 
obsessed with it and looking into all the aspects of it. So I've, I've learned a few things, but I think Christine will be able to help fill in the gaps whenever, uh, whenever I don't have all the details. So thank you very much, Christine, for being here. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into uh, the contents of today's show. So over the past week, I've been having a really, really awesome time using Mastodon. Uh, so recently, there's been a huge surge of people migrating over to the Fediverse, which Mastodon is a part of, thanks to the very interesting developments over at Twitter. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I think it's actually really fantastic news for people like us, people who like, you know, system configuration, using tools like Emacs, etc., because the Fediverse, Mastodon, and ActivityPub are actually much more hacker-friendly and self-directed than the monolithic proprietary networks like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc., um, so in today's stream, I'm going to try to make a case for why you should consider moving to the Fediverse for your social networking needs, especially if you've tried it in the past and you weren't really that impressed with it. Uh, in my case, I've had three different instances where I've tried to, to use the Fediverse or specifically Mastodon. Uh, the first was maybe around 2017, maybe the first time when like the actual Mastodon server and implementation uh, showed up. I created an account probably on Mastodon Social or Mastodon Rocks, one of those instances. And I didn't really see a whole lot of activity that I was interested in, or maybe I just didn't know how to find it. I didn't really look very hard. Uh, I, I wanted it to work because I really felt like this is a really cool idea, you know, having a federated decentralized social network, but it just didn't have the activity or the presence that you would have on a place like Twitter. So fast forward to, I guess around maybe 2021, where uh, the Fostodon instance, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, was created, uh, where people like to talk about open source software, Linux, Emacs, Vim, pretty much all the stuff that you would find in this sort of uh, circle, the type of people who watch this channel. I joined the instance. There was a few people there who were uh, fans of the System Crafters channel, people that I interact with pretty often on IRC and Discord, etc. So it was nice to have more people there, but it still didn't feel like it had the critical mass necessary to feel like it was worth investing a lot of time posting and interacting with people. So it sort of slid off my radar again. I was mainly just using Twitter, mainly, mainly just lurking on Twitter, because to be frank, the main way that m many people use Twitter, I don't really like using Twitter that way. I like to sort of interact with people and not really be overly self promoting So, uh, you know, I was morally just lurking on Twitter for the most part. But um, after all this sort of recent activity has been happening around Mastodon, I decided to go just check out what's happening, especially after I heard the new uh, emacs.ch instance got sprung up. So I went back to my Fostodon account and took a look, and there was just so many people talking, so many things happening at the same time, um, a lot of activity on posts. Uh, it's kind of crazy to me because the number of people who are actively using the Fediverse or Mastodon, etc., it's not anywhere near the scale as what you see on a social media site like Twitter, but the amount of um, engagement or reactions to posts, replies to posts, people, you know, boosting or retweeting them, basically, I find is way higher uh, on Mastodon or on the Fediverse. So it's really interesting how the dynamics are sort of shifting where it's not like you have these, you know, million follower accounts that are just blasting out things to, the, you know, the plebeians that are using the social media site who just go and, and you know, just upvote everything for the big accounts and all the sort of smaller accounts get drowned out. I feel like there's much more of a level playing field for people who want to come in and actually share the interesting things that they're working on, uh, cool projects you're building, maybe if you're trying to teach people how to do a certain thing. Um, if you want to be in a more community style environment, then what I'm seeing right now on uh, the Fediverse is much more in line with that than what you see on Twitter. Just to give you an example of that, let me jump over to uh, my actual account on uh, on uh, Fostodon. Uh, the post that I made for this particular stream has been up for, I don't know, one hour. And it's got uh, 22 boosts and 25 likes. Uh, the equivalent post on Twitter has one retweet and five likes. So there's a lot more people on the Fediverse right now who are interested in the kinds of things that we are interested in. Um, so if you want to talk to people who actually care about this stuff, who, you know, you might be able to learn some things from, maybe make new friends, uh, maybe get some eyes on projects that you work on, I would definitely recommend jumping on uh, the Fediverse. And in this stream, I'm going to show you more about how you can do that. Okay. So first of all, uh, what is ActivityPub? I keep talking about Mastodon, but Mastodon is not really the important thing here. The, the important thing is the ActivityPub 
uh, protocol, which I believe is built on another protocol called Activity Streams. And effectively what that is, is an open protocol that um, it makes it possible to create a decentralized social networking platform that it, uh, enables many different servers to form a big federated network that people like to call the Fediverse, which I'll sort of mention a bunch of times. It's sort of like an overarching term which describes um, both the protocol and the implementations and I guess the people who were involved with uh, making this thing happen. And uh, these servers that I mentioned are typically called instances, and they can be written with any number of server implementations and they can all be like either from like a single person on an instance to hundreds or thousands hundreds of thousands of people using an instance uh you know, there are very very large servers like the mastodon social server there's you know single many single person servers around it's possible to host your own server there's a lot of tools to do that so it's a much different environment than what you see on the monolithic social media sites where there's just you know one person hosting the site and everybody has an account and sort of just plays by the rules of the system here it's a more democratized system where you can have your own server or you could be a part of a server there's other servers where people could follow you can follow accounts of different servers and you know you, you can interact with tweets or toots or posts on these various servers you can boost different accounts or different um different posts on the servers and uh you don't have to be in one one place to talk to people about a certain topic you can have people on many many different servers talking about the same topic and you can tie those things together by tags i think i got like notification sounds from mastodon right now that keep popping up and i'm trying to get them to stop anyway um the point being is that it's not just one big server. There's many, many servers involved. And in fact, I would hope that there would be even more smaller servers as time goes on, something we can talk about in a little bit. But uh, that's sort of the power of the network is that there's not one centralized place where either, either someone can shut you out of using it or, uh, or maybe you just don't like the sort of the culture there. You can go to a, 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 an independent instance that has its own culture that, that you prefer, and you don't have to be involved in the culture of the other instances. There's even a thing where an instance can block other instances that are problematic. Like if there's a lot of trolls coming from a particular instance or anything like that, uh, you can sort of isolate yourself from the places that you don't want to see content from and, uh, and federate with places that you do want to see content from. So it, it gives you a lot more options about how you build communities inside of social media rather than just depending on a company to provide you with a platform and then hoping they don't shut you down somehow. Sorry for the, the notification sounds. I don't know why. I, I swear I muted the tab unless I have another one open and that's why they keep playing. And for some reason, uh, Firefox is not letting me click anymore. So I can't uh, try to figure out which tab it is. All right, anyway. Computers run real slow right now. Anyway, so. So like I said, um, each instance has its own rules, which you should check out before you sign up to join there. Usually, whenever you go to an instance website, you'll see the list of rules there, uh, and then you can sign up for an account. And typically, typically you pick a server based on the kind of uh, local activity that you would like to be a part of, or the sort of general topics that are involved, uh, or the culture that's involved with a given instance. So uh, that is uh, happening on that server. So. Um, We'll talk about how to pick a server in a minute, but it's, it's good to know that you can uh, find a place where you would like to call home and uh, sort of find people who are talking about things that are more relevant to you rather than just the fire hose of information that's on, uh, on Twitter or other similar sites. I thought I had the link to the Activity Pub Rocks uh, site on this. Maybe it's here. Yeah. I'm, I'm half prepared for the stream because <laughs> I've been a little bit busy today. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Activity Pub. So um, there's a really cool site called ActivityPub.rocks that gives you sort of an overview of how Activity Pub works and also links to the actual specification. Since this is an open standard that's actually been, I don't know if the right word is approved, but uh, approved by the W3 uh, consortium, which is sort of like the main web standards consortium. Um, so this is like an official spec. This is like, it's been given a thumbs up from the, the sort of powers that be in the, in the web world, uh, of the W3C social web working group. Sorry. 
So anyway, um, you can read the whole thing. You could even try to make your own implementation if you want to. I might be nerd sniped into doing such a thing one day. But uh, anyway, the, the point being that you can learn as much as you want to from uh, clicking through the links on this website. But if I were to click on this link here, it will give us a little bit of an overview. This is actually the spec, I think, of um, the protocol. So there's two layers of the protocol. One is the server to server federation protocol. And this is what makes it possible so that you can have many different servers in this sort of decentralized network that can communicate with one another and enable people to follow each other from the different servers and uh, make, make posts, like, like each other's posts, boost posts, even send direct messages, etc. There's also a client to server protocol, which makes sense because for a client to get the information from the server, you've got to have an API for that. Um, so this uh, is not only just for, is it this one that's muting, uh, beeping? Let's, let's get rid of that. Must be that one. So, uh, so you can have you know, a client that talks to the server, but you can also write bots really easily to access this. Um, one second. And uh, it's interesting how it works, actually. Um, so let's see. It says that a user is represented by actors. That part's not so interesting, but there is this sort of this concept of an inbox and an outbox where a server for a particular user has things coming in and things going out. And uh, this is a typical web uh, API where you have endpoints that you can sort of interact with to uh, perform operations and, you know, get information and maybe make posts or follow people, et cetera. You can look into all this if you want to, but um, this diagram sort of shows how it works. Uh, you're sort of posting things and then they get sent to the cloud <laughs> and then the things come back, but it really, let me, let me tell you my understanding of, of how this works. We're not gonna just walk through the spec. With ActivityPub, um, and I'll, I'll go to this screen so you don't get blinded. Whenever you have an account on a server, you can make posts and those posts will show up for people on that given server. There's a local feed on the server where um, anybody who's making posts on that server can see the posts of the public posts of anyone else. Um, now, if you are following someone from another server, what seems to happen is uh, you, your server makes a request to the other server through the federation protocol saying, hey, there's a user on this server who wants to follow someone from your server. So what that does is make the, the destination server um, subscribe the original server for updates. So the, now anytime someone posts, let's, say, let's call it server A and server B. Server A is where you, where you live. Server B is where someone you want to, want to follow lives. And if you want to follow them, uh, server A sends a message to server B saying, hey, give me updates about this user on server B and probably even other things from there too. And this is where the federation comes in. Like if you have your own activity pub server, you have to follow people from other servers before you start getting information from other servers. You don't just like light up a network as far as I understand. So um, now server B, since it knows that server A has people who are following things on server B, it now starts sending updates about things that happen on server B to server A. So that's how things go from one server to another. So um, what you'll see is that whenever you are looking at posts by other people, certain information may be there, may not be there based on how many people are following the stuff from that particular server. Maybe Christine has a better way to, okay, so Christine's singing in the chat. Uh, Alice on A wants to subscribe to Bob on B or Alyssa and Ben in the protocol document because I secretly inserted a bunch of SICP represent references. Well, of course, because you're a schemer. Um, the activity pub spec also talks up Lisp and org mode in various places. Oh, that's nice. Anyway, uh, point being that, hold on. Yes. Anyway, um, the point being that the way this works is is not that everybody's connected to everybody. It's based on who, which people on one server are following people on another server and the information sort of goes both ways from there. Um, so go look at the protocol if you're interested. I can't do a very good job of explaining what the protocol does, but it's really interesting how, how it does work. So um, let me see if I can move on to the next thing. So getting started, um, if you want to get started using the Fediverse or uh, ActivityPub, I, I would recommend starting with Mastodon since it's sort of the most mature implementation. It's going to give you a social media experience um, in the same realm as what you would expect from a site like Twitter, but it's different in its own ways. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the differences, but the, you should 
expect that certain things are not gonna work the, the way that you expect them to. Like for instance, if you go looking at someone's profile and you see they have, oh, uh, 200 followers. If you click on the followers list, you may see three people there. It just really just depends on how the information is propagated between, between servers. Um, so you may have to go to that person's server and look at their profile on that server to get all the information because the information doesn't, doesn't propagate fully between servers unless it's requested. Uh, but that doesn't really matter so much because on the Fediverse, we're not really as concerned about like, you know, who has the highest follower count. It's more about interactions and, you know, building community. So, um, the thing that matters the most, which is being able to make posts, reply to posts, boost in favorite posts, all that stuff is very possible to do there. So Mastodon is probably the most mature interface and server backend for, for this thing. But we're going to talk about a couple other instances of that uh, a little bit later. So um, to get started with Mastodon, you're going to want to pick an instance and create an account. Um, there are many, many instances out there. I've got a link to a site here, this mastodon.help slash instances, where you can go look up uh, instances for pretty much any different uh, topic you'd be interested in, or even like, you know, geographic locale, like maybe if you want to um, inter interact with people that are in your country or in your local area or whatever you want to call it, uh, you can do that by going to the site and searching for instances. Uh, but for me, there's two main recommendations that I have for instances for people who watch this channel. Uh, the first being uh, emacs.ch, which is a relatively new instance. Um, and there's a lot of people who are Emacs users who are joining up there and a lot of activities going on right now. You know, a lot of people that you know, like Sacha Chua are there. Um, who else is there? Lots of people. If you go there, you'll see quite a few people. They're, they're, they're gaining like hundreds of users every week or so. So it's, it's really cool to see that many people uh, joining up there. And uh, the benefit of being in a server like that, like I said before, is that the local feed for the server has people talking mainly about Emacs, probably other things as well, but it's easier to find people to follow just by looking at the local feed on the server and seeing what people are talking about. Also very easy to find people who you recognize from the Emacs community if they're there and they're making posts about Emacs. Also there's fostadon.org, which is the, the server that I am on because it existed before Emacs.ch. And it's great for the uh, general uh, FOSS community, the free and open source software community, uh, for people who are enthusiasts of GNU Linux, uh, Emacs, other sort of open source tools in general. So it really just depends on which one that you would like to hear more from in your local feed. Like I said, that local feed is sort of your main source of information around uh, what's happening on your server. So pick a server that uh, sort of caters to your interests, I think. Also, you can pick a server based on just whether it has a cool domain name. I mean, we're all sort of, you know, vain in that way. So you might as well pick one that looks cool. So I'll probably do the same thing at some point. I'll make my own server and have a cool domain name. Anyway, point being, um, the first thing you'll do is just pick a server, but pick one of these two and you can't really go wrong if you're a person who uh, watches this channel. Uh, the web client for Mastodon, Mastodon is really nice and you can get along really well with it uh, first before trying to look for other clients. Uh, they also seem to have mobile apps for Android and iOS if you uh, use one of those mobile platforms. So, you know, you can get started really quickly. Just create an account and then log into it using the web client or the mobile clients. Um, also, there's a variety of Mastodon clients on different platforms. Um, I've used uh, Fedilab on Android and more recently I've been using Tusky, which I think is really nice. Um, it's got more of a polished interface than what I saw from Fedilab, so I've been enjoying it the last uh, week or so. Um, if other people have recommendations, please feel free to shout them out in the chat. Obviously, I don't use iOS, so I don't really know what the best app is for iOS, but if people know a good one for that, uh, definitely feel free to, to shout it out. Um, and since this is an open protocol, anyone can make a client. And anyone can make a server too, but more importantly, anyone can make a client, and I don't think it's very difficult to do so. Uh, because it's, I don't think the protocol is very complicated. So um, if it's something that you're interested in doing, like if just a fun little hacking project in a language that you're learning or something, maybe writing a Mastodon client, or sorry, an activity pub client would be the way to go for that. Uh, also worth mentioning that many of the clients that you find for Mastodon, even if they sound like they're only for Mastodon, might also work with other activity pub server implementations. Since it, it's mostly the activity pub protocol that's being used between all these servers and implementations, uh, clients typically will work unless there's like extensions to the protocol that are specific to a given server implementation. 
But um, I've noticed that many of them that I've seen also support in, uh, implementations like Polaroma, which is another server backend that we'll talk about. So um, uh, it's it's worth if if you want to use a different type of backend server, you might be able to use a Mastodon client to talk to that server. Let me see what Christine's saying in the chat here. Uh, Christine says that note that ActivityPub provides both a client to server protocol and a server to server protocol, but sadly, it's actually not using the uh, ActivityPub client to server protocol. I think that she's referring to um, Mastodon. Yeah, Mastodon's using their own client protocol. Uh, uh, Philip says, I'm not sure if writing an activity pub client is a good, that good of a first project. Well, I mean, you got to have some motivation to learn something new. So that could be one thing. All right. So, uh, the next thing you're probably going to want to figure out is how to find people to follow. So once you join an instance, uh, there, there are some useful things that you can do. I'm saying they're the three most useful things that you can do, but you, there's probably other, other things that people in the chat can, can shout out. Uh, first of all, uh, follow hashtags. So one thing you can do, uh, at least in Mastodon, I'm not sure if other um, clients support it just yet, but uh, on Mastodon, you can search for a uh, hashtag. Let me see, can I, yeah, here we go. So if I search for Emacs, uh, you can see how many people are uh, are posting about it. And I think if you go up here, there's this little icon that you can click to follow the hashtag. And I believe that makes, uh, at least on Mastodon, makes posts show up in your home timeline. But more importantly, uh, you can have different tabs for uh, these different um, uh, tag feeds. And various different clients like Tusky allow you to build views based on tags. The interesting thing is that these posts from different tags are not just coming from the instance that you're on. They're also coming from any other server that your server is federated with. So in this case, there's a person who's on Mastodon Social that has an Emacs tag post. Uh, there's another person, Eric, uh, who I know, know from Twitter, uh, that's on, I think, Fetty Science. So there's, you know, you can see people from various different uh, instances tweeting or tweeting, posting about a particular, particular topic based on tag, and you can choose to follow them there. I'm using this to follow uh, the Emacs tag, the Geeks tag, Lisp scheme, game dev, pixel art, various different topics that I'm interested in. And I've been able to follow a lot of people just by uh, looking at those tag feeds to find interesting things that um, that I want to uh, engage with or, or read about. So uh, Christine says, I am the most distracting guest, huh? I, I'm, I don't see the chat half the time. So uh, you're not distracting me for sure. Uh, Philip says, uh, "What is?" Ask Christine, "What is your opinion on the term toot?" Well, my opinion is that it's a little funny. That's why I prefer to just use posts. But uh, yeah, I mean, toot, you know, call it what you want. Just don't call it tweets, because you might get sued. Um, so anyway, uh, the point being is that uh, tags are a very good way to find people to follow who are talking about topics that you're interested in. Also, for for you, if you are tweeting about a particular topic it's way more important on the Fediverse to use tags than it was on other social media sites because um, since there's not an algorithm that's pushing content to you based on what it thinks you like um, and it's not pushing content to other people based on what it thinks they like, you have to do a little bit more of the work to um, categorize the post that you make so that other people can find it and tags are the way to do that. So if you post about Emacs or about Geeks or anything else, you definitely put a hashtag on it a uh, nice thing on the more recent versions of Mastodon, at least, is you can edit your post. So if you forget to um, put a hashtag on your post, you can go back and edit it and then put the tag in correctly. But good to get into a habit of putting tags on your post because it means other people can find you just as easily as you can find them. Um, really, really important. Hello, Benoit. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Eric, you were on my screen. I just mentioned your name a second ago. So... Um, very, very important stuff. Uh, but this is how community gets built, I think, on a, on a federated platform like uh, the Fediverse, Activity Pub, Mastodon, etc. is by, and Christine says, tag bombing how great Emacs is right now. See, you see, this is real time. We're, we're on federated social networking and it's, it's updating live right on the screen on this stream. It's great, right? Um, so yes, uh, 
we want to be able to find each other and talk to each other on these sites, especially if we're interested in the same thing. So tags is the way to do that. So definitely um, use tags on your posts. Uh, the other thing, uh, you can find other people that you already follow on Twitter. So if you've been a big uh, Twitter user for a while and you follow a lot of people and you actually get value from following them, I follow a lot of people who um, tweet about things that are really useful to me from for as a learning resource. Um, or maybe just like information that I need, like uh, whether there's, there's new Emacs packages coming out or maybe some new developments happening in the language that I use, et cetera. Um, a lot of those people have been using Twitter over time, but since a lot of people are moving to the Fediverse, uh, you can now find them based on whether they put a link to their uh, Fediverse profile in their Twitter profile. Uh, there's various different ways where these apps can find it, but there's this one site that I use that's really nice called Debirdify. And if you open that up, if you authenticate with it with uh, Twitter, then it will give you a listing of all the people that you follow and even the people who follow you who have a Fediverse profile link in their bio or in a pinned tweet on their profile. So um, it could be a very good way to jumpstart the list of who you follow based on who you already follow on Twitter. Um, whenever I used it, I did find quite a lot of people that I did not know were on Mastodon yet. So. Definitely give this a shot if you uh, wanna sort of migrate who you follow over to this site because there are many more people showing up here now and I think it's a good thing. Let's see. Um, also, follow me because uh, I'm on the uh, Fediverse and I would love to hear from you. So, uh, fossadon.org slash at davidwill or at davidwill at fossadon.org. I mean, obviously you can see me here. Um, Definitely give me a follow on there and I'll be boosting people who are tweeting about Emacs and whatnot, uh, geeks, etc. Also, I tweet a lot about other things too. I'm not really sure like what the etiquette is about tweeting about different topics because I'm sort of interested in, you know, system crafting and also, you know, game development, graphics, etc. at the same time. So I'm just going to try tweeting about everything and see what happens. And if people get annoyed, they can just tell me, but I think it's probably fine. So just follow me there and, um, you know, let me know about interesting things that you find on uh, the Fediverse, because I'm always interested to hear about uh, new cool stuff. Okay, so if you uh, join a particular Mastodon instance, and, and Gunn is about to ask the same question, um, and you're not really satisfied with the one that you join, maybe you picked mastodon.social because it was the most obvious one to pick at first, uh, how do you switch to a different instance? Um, we can do that fairly easily. In fact, it's a lot more painless now than it used to be. Um, there's actually official documentation about how you can migrate a Mastodon account to another instance. And um, there's a couple of things you have to do in the, the UI um, on your old account versus your new account. So basically you would create a, an account on a new instance. And then in that account, you basically say that this is an alias of another, my, your old account. And then you go to your, your profile of your old account and say, I'm migrating to this new account that's been listed as an alias. What it does is it moves over your, I don't know if it moves over your whole uh, profile details, but at least it moves over your followers. So anybody who was following you on the old account get moved over to the new account. That's like the most important thing because you don't want people to have to like go find you again, refollow you again, because you'll lose a lot of people that way. So if you use this process of moving your account, um, it will be a lot more smooth. There's also a way to export all of your, uh, your toots. And I don't know if it's possible to import those on the new server. Might be possible, but I'm not sure exactly how that works. Uh, but the important thing being that you can move to a new server and pull your followers along with you. So, uh, and also the old profile stays there, but it's got a redirect link on it. So if anybody finds your old profile, either through maybe a link that you have online somewhere, they'll at least know that you've moved somewhere else and they can follow you there instead. Um, let's see what's going on in the chat here. I've missed a lot of stuff, I think. Let me just scroll up here. Up, up, up. Okay. Uh, uh, Gee TV says, there are so many implementations created in the last few months. It's awesome. Yeah, there's there's a few things uh, I've seen recently that are that seem pretty interesting. Let's see what else. Uh, Ramsey says, so Mastodon is like Reddit, but a little more complicated. Uh, well, Reddit is more like a forum, I guess, uh, compared to 
Activity Pub or a Fediverse servers. Activity Pub and Fediverse is more like, you know, a typical social media site. So it's not really the same. Let's see. And Gene says, uh, boosts are important to increase visibility of stuff you like. Yeah, that's also very important. If uh, someone's tweeting something that you find cool and interesting, definitely uh, boost their post. It's basically like a retweet. If you boost their post, it goes into your feed for other people to see. So it could be a way to help other people get visibility on their stuff. Uh, on a network like this, where it's decentralized and not everybody is on the same server, it's very helpful to help other people get found through the the work you do uh, boosting them. Uh, Philip says, I would like to see some way to add tags that aren't a part of the post because I've never linked like the concept of hashtags and text. The best compromise I've found is adding tags to the end of a post. That's what a lot of people do on uh, Mastodon or other sites like this is they put the tags at the end of the post. It does feel a little bit weird and like scammy to put them in line in the text, but I think that we just have to get over that feeling uh, that we're not like, you know, marketing to people necessarily. We're actually trying to help people find things that we're talking about because they might be interested in it. So maybe it's not so bad. Um, I, I'm trying to get used to the idea of doing it myself. Uh, Eric says, content warnings are great for letting people skip your toots easily. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of uh, the usage of content warnings. I, I think that actually content warning is not how it's done in the spec. I think it's more like just like a subject line for a post, but uh, Mastodon uses that as a content warning. So you'll see a lot of posts where there'll be like one line of text and then I think content warning expand or something. And you click on that, you get to see the contents. Uh, it's basically where, you know, someone posts something that they think that other people might um, not want to see by default. So they just sort of hide it behind that little expand button and then you can click it to see it. Um, and an interesting thing is that if a post has that content warning and you reply to it, your post also gets a content warning. So it's kind of an interesting way to talk about things that might be, uh, Annoying to other people. Uh, Gavin says, I don't know why people always make such specific instances. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool to have like your own little place on the internet, especially if you want to be able to control your data. Uh, if you are a member of a very large uh, instance, obviously you can export your data at any time, but you're sort of beholden to the people who use that site. Um, they can shut the site down at any time. They can ban you at any time. Um, you, you can be banned from other servers because someone on your server did something bad or was, was, you know, a bad actor, basically, you know, spamming or being offensive or, or harassing people or whatever. If they do that on your server to people on other servers, that server could block your server completely because they think there's, you know, idiots coming from your server. So, uh, if that happens, then you get blocked off from the Fediverse. So it's actually safer for you as an individual, in my opinion, to have your own server or a small server where you and maybe your close friends or like a small community are together because it's less likely for you to get shut out of the wider Fediverse uh, based on the actions of someone else that you can't control or for, you know, someone who's like a power hungry admin to like shut you off or harass you or whatever. So this is a little bit better, I think, to have your own instance for that reason. And also, you can have it on your own, you know, custom domain. So, you know, you can have, you know, geekslover.org <laughs> as a, a, a Fediverse instance if you want. Uh, Fikri says, I've seen the creator of Nano Emacs create UI customization of Mastodon and Emacs. It looks really great. Yes, uh, that is pretty cool, actually. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Simply Peter says, oh, I'm too late. Just saw this on Mastodon. Has someone boosted your post? Well, you're not late because we got, like, probably one hour left in the stream. So thanks for coming. Uh, Gene says, or a power hungry billionaire for that matter. Yes, absolutely. I mean, some people like uh, power and followers way too much. So, you know, you can't really control the behavior of some people. Uh, Gavin says, uh, I more mean, why do people make instances focused on something like Emacs? Why, I like, I love Emacs, but it's far from the only thing that's on my mind. I agree with you there. Um, that's, one part of the reason why I don't really join the Emacs, like I don't just migrate over to the Emacs instance is because um, even though like I really enjoy the topics that I talk about on this channel, that's like one 
fragment of my set of interests as a whole. So, uh, like, I feel like you, if you're shoving yourself into that bucket, then... I don't know, it feels a little bit limiting in some ways, but really it's not. I mean, you can do whatever you want on the Fediverse. So it's really just sort of like an identifier. I don't know. It probably is very easy to overthink this stuff. Uh, Christine says, the idea is that mat instances are where the community are is a mastodonism and something I have objected to. Yeah, that's a good point. So I've been saying before that uh, one value of being on a larger server is that you have the local feed that shows you... Um, the, the toots or posts by the people who were on that instance, but you don't have to be a part of that. And I think that it's, it makes the Fediverse more fragile the more people join these big instances. Uh, I also saw a really interesting post. I can't remember if it, if it was a post directly on Mastodon or a blog post. If someone remembers what the post is and can link to it in the chat, that'd be helpful. But basically saying that um, the bigger an instance is, like it's sort of like an exponential ramp up in the amount of cost, especially if you have very large users on that instance, like let's say Stephen Fry or like very famous people who have been joining Mastodon. So um, it's better in general for people to have their own instances, I think. Uh, and it's healthier for the Fediverse and it makes it where people sort of understand that these, this is a federated protocol and not just a monolithic uh, social media website or a couple of big monolithic social media websites that sort of federate together. Uh, Christine says, oh, that probably got eaten too. Yeah, YouTube is very uh, eager to eat any links that get posted in the chat, unfortunately. Uh, Christine says, in email, community is at the mailing list level, not the domain level. So how would you translate that to uh, activity pub then? Through hashtags, maybe? Uh, Benoit says, small Mastodon instances feels like the BBS communities of the 90s. Yeah, it also reminds me a lot of the Tildeverse, uh, which is sort of like the uh, small Unix server slash BBS type thing that's been going on for a while on the internet, which I think is uh, pretty pretty cool. Uh, Christine says, uh, this is a huge topic. Let's do a separate episode. Well, uh, that would be pretty cool. Maybe we should have a chat live on stream about this kind of thing. It'd be pretty pretty fun, I think. Uh, Purple G says, uh, it'd be neat if some Emacs package maintains um, their own instance and their packages has dedicated accounts with release notes. Yeah, or at least has a bot that can tweet out updates about packages. I mean, there's a lot of really interesting ways you could use ActivityPub um, from a programmatic standpoint that... I don't think we've really scratched the surface on. I think XMPP was the the previous protocol that a lot of these ideas showed up in, like being able to have, you know, bot agents that you could send messages to and have them do things. Um, so ActivityPub has the potential for also doing something like that, which I think is pretty interesting. And ActivityPub, it doesn't say anything about like social media in the name. It says ActivityPub. So it's about posting activity. And activity doesn't have to be uh, text that you're, posting, right? Um, it can be other things. I think the activity streams protocol, that's sort of the, the fundamental of this, is it sort of gives you a little bit more of the idea, like maybe there's a stream of activity of some sort, and maybe it could be more than just like text posts or image posts and stuff. Christine says, uh, XMPP is awesome. I used to have uh, Emacs send me notifications over XMPP to my uh, N900 phone. Wow, N900, that's awesome. Nokia used to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah, didn't, uh, that was kind of back in the heyday of XMPP, right? Like there was what, the MIMO, um, operating system for, that Nokia produced that was like really forward thinking and kind of cool. That was, that was awesome. I really wanted one of those phones, but that was before I had an income. Still college days. Jeff says, I've used XMPP to send notifications to a pager. Yeah, definitely can do a lot of that stuff. All right. Yeah, MIMO 5 was wild. It, it, that, it had some really nice UI and stuff too. Like it was an, an impressive mobile platform before things sort of went off in the Android direction. All right, let's talk about uh, hosting your own instance. So I haven't actually done this yet, so I can't really claim to understand the ramifications of doing it, but I feel like it's worth mentioning because I think more people should do it. So... There's a lot of information online about how you can host your own Mastodon instance, even with like one-click installation on cloud providers like DigitalOcean. 
Um, if you go to the official docs for Mastodon, they actually have a tutorial or like a walkthrough about how you can host uh, a Mastodon instance yourself. But I don't really recommend hosting Mastodon yourself because it's really complicated. There's like multiple services involved, like a task queue and like databases and caches and all kinds of stuff. And I feel like it's not really the right way for an individual person to host their own Fediverse instance. Um, I think it's better to use one of the other smaller, more streamlined implementations like let's say Pleroma or GoToSocial. I don't know how far along GoToSocial is, but I've been hearing people using it. I think Technomancy is using it. Um, so these two, among other options, would be a way to host your own instance, especially on a uh, low resource instance, like a very small VM on a cloud provider or a Raspberry Pi or maybe a um, server that you have just sitting around in your house. You could have your own instance just for yourself or maybe your, you and your friends uh, using one of these pieces of software. And because they use the ActivityPub protocol, they federate with the existing Mastodon instances that are out in the world. So you can talk to people uh, on any uh, Mastodon instance. You don't have to be using Mastodon to use uh, the Fediverse or ActivityPub. Um, me, I think that I would probably try to use Pleroma because it does look like it is pretty far along. Um, and also the interesting thing about Pleroma is that it has its own user interface, a uh, web-based user, user interface, but it also ships with the Mastodon web interface. So if you have a Pleroma server running, you can actually use the Mastodon UI on your server, but you're not using Mastodon. You're using Pleroma's server instead. And I think a lot of um, client implementations work with, with Pleroma also. But what Christine said makes me wonder if that's actually true. Uh, I know that at least uh, Mastodon.el says that it works with it. We'll, we'll talk about Mastodon.el in a minute. Um, let's see. Oh, thanks a lot for coming, uh, Christine. So let's see. Uh, PCAL says, I've been using GoToSocial. Uh, it's not complete, but it works for the fundamental stuff. But there are certainly things that are broken. Yeah, anything that's like a new up and coming uh, implementation is going to be not so solid compared to a mature one like um, Mastodon. However, I've heard good things about Pleroma that it's pretty uh, solid and it's a lot faster and uses less memory, less CPU than um, the Mastodon backend. Plus you only need like a Postgres SQL or Postgres SQL. What, how do you pronounce that? Uh, the Postgres, <laughs> that database, you need one of those and the server, uh, unlike Mastodon, which needs like multiple things. So. Probably a lot easier for you to set up and use if you are not a system administrator in your day-to-day -day life, which I am not. So uh, that's why I would probably pick that one for my own um, uh, server. So um, I think it, hosting your own instance is a great idea uh, for the reasons that we mentioned before, you know, not giving all the power to a couple of really big instances, uh, you know, actually participating in the Fediverse with your own server and it could be a really fun way to sort of just, you know, have another thing that you can set up software for. Like nobody has made a package, as far as I know, for Pleroma and Geeks for hosting a Pleroma server using Geeks. I think it would be cool if someone did. I would do it, but I don't have time to do it. So if someone else does it, please let me know. Um, I don't think there's a package for Mastodon's backend in Geeks yet either, but I think that one's going to be a lot harder to package. So probably not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, Fade says Postgres SQL, Postgres SQL, Postgres SQL. Okay, fine. ETV says, uh, go to social is pretty lightweight, but it will take some time to become mature. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh, another instance, uh, sorry, go to social. One benefit of it is actually you can use SQLite with it. So you don't even need to hold, host a server. You could actually have a on file system database for that. Um, though. If you follow a lot of people and there's a lot of posts, I don't know if having it on a file system DB is gonna be a bottleneck at some point in the future. So maybe having a real real database is, is better for this. All right. Uh, Elijah says, hmm, perhaps I shall do a Pleroma Geeks package. Please do, please do. Uh, I would love to host my own instance using Geeks and not with, you know, just some random, you know, Linux distro because I want to be able to like manage it correctly and, you know, have a working configuration that works over upgrades. So, yeah. All right. 
Uh, so let's talk about something that's probably more interesting to all of you who are here, uh, using Mastodon in Emacs. So obviously you all know by now there's, there's a Mastodon client in Emacs. And if you don't know, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you now. Um, but this has been actually in development for a while. I actually used the Mastodon client for Emacs 2018, 2019, maybe, I don't know. It, it's been around for a while, but it has been getting a lot of uh, development recently, uh, and a lot of usage. So. Things have been progressing quite quickly. A lot of really cool developments that are coming down a pipe um, for like improving the interface, et cetera. So I figured it might be cool for us to take a look at it. Oh, hey, there's uh, Dave Thompson. Nice to see you. Uh, Dave says, I added Ruby support to Geeks many years ago. Trying to get the Rails dependency tree packaged is difficult. Okay, so you're basically saying that um, Pluruma might not be so easy. So what is it that Pluruma is using? Is it Elixir? Is that based on Ruby? So um, let's uh, hop over to the uh, Mastodon EL uh, repo. Elixir is based on Erlang. That's what I thought. Come on now. All right. So um, on Codeberg is the uh, Mastodon.el repo where you can go take a look at the readme for the, uh, the package. You can install this using, I think it's on Melpa, right? Uh, let's see uh, about Melpa here. I love being blinded every time I go to a, a light theme website. All right, so Mastodon. All right, cool. Yeah, that's right. So Mastodon is on Melpa. I don't know if it's on Nongenu. Uh, let's see if, uh, if PCAL will tell me before I get there. I don't think it's there yet, but uh, Masto. Nope, not there yet. Ah, David says, uh, Mastodon won't be easy is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, Mastodon will not be easy for sure. <laughs> okay, PKL, you, you got there right after I did. So that's good. Um, yeah, I, I wonder how much trouble it is to get packages on non-GNU because I actually would prefer to put things there than on uh, Melpa, mainly because it's, you know, built into Emacs now. Anyway, uh, let's load this thing up and see if I can get it to work here. I'm going to use straight to install it. So straight use package uh, Mastodon. And let's see if it gives me the newest stuff. It's probably cloning the repo. Building. Okay. So um, the most important thing you're gonna want to do whenever you install this package is to set these two variables. I don't know if the names of these are changing. Um, I thought that this active user variable was something else recently. This package is in active development, so things might be changing and breaking here and there. So just uh, uh, keep an eye out for any kind of like changes that might go on. I don't know if it's changed. I'm just saying like I, I was surprised at the name of this variable when I thought it was something else. So Mastodon instance URL is the URL to your actual Mastodon instance or your activity pub server instance. And then Mastodon active user is the name of the user. I believe that's the username. We're going to find out in a second if I can actually log into my account. Uh, give me one second and I'll try to do that. So I'm going to eval this because I want to set these variables. And then uh, let's try to run uh, MetaX Mastodon. So it's going to ask me for an, an authorization code. Um, so it copied a URL to my clipboard. I got to open it in a browser and then um, it, it'll I'll have to do an authorization. So. I don't know what this is going to show on the screen, so I'm just going to hide my screen for a second, and then uh, I'll, I'll jump back into it once we have uh, the authorization. Yeah, so authorize, copy the authorization code. I'm glad I hid my screen for this. All right, so now I'm going to close that and copy some things to get it out of my copy buffer and then back to the screen. Okay. So uh, now you can actually see that we are looking at the feed of my, uh, whoops. Yeah, the feed of my Mastodon account. Um, it's all in text, obviously, because this is an Emacs UI, but you get access to all the stuff in uh, your instance, just like you do on any other client, which I think is really awesome. Um, I haven't been using this actively, so I don't know all of the, the E bindings, etc. But we're gonna sort of just look at some things while we do this. Um, let's see. Let me scroll down a bit. So there's a, a whole um, set of the key bindings on the README. If you want to check it out, there's a context menu um, in case you need to learn about some stuff. I will mention this 
first because it is a bit of a not a problem but it might surprise you if you are an evil mode user um the key bindings don't work so well to start with you might need to turn your buffer into emacs state with uh, control z you can see down here this little icon turns blue when it's in emacs state uh but before the actual key bindings work because they have a lot of one letter key bindings like n and p for scrolling so i'm using n to go uh down in the list and uh p to go up in the list so uh Definitely disable evil mode. I think someone's working on evil mode bindings for the package that might actually get resolved pretty soon. But uh, until then, definitely uh, try to turn off the um, evil mode bindings inside these buffers. Otherwise, you might be really surprised about what the behavior is. So I'm gonna use a question mark. Okay, so for me, it says question mark is undefined. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, turn off evil mode in the current buffer. Let's try that and see if the bindings uh, work correctly. Yeah. So question mark is not working. Oh, apparently I need some package called discover. Never heard of that. Uh, all right, go to the previous item, toot notification, um, meta in, meta P, go to the next interesting thing that has an action. I haven't tried that yet. So alt in, ah, so like it jumps to usernames and links. I like that, that's, that's kind of smart, okay. Um, F is open federated timeline. So right now I'm looking at my home, like the, the feed of the people that I followed. But if I do capital F, it will open up the hmm, ERC mode. Wanted to do that. Oh, I have a bug in my pro, in my configuration. That's why. Um, this brings up the federated timeline, which actually I was talking about the local timeline before, but the federated timeline is actually an amalgamation of all the posts that are from the local server plus the people who are being followed from other servers. So when a, when server B sends posts that come from its server to server A because somebody on server A followed a person in server B, those posts show up for the person who followed them, but also in the federated timeline of your server. So you can see a lot of posts from people that you would never even expect uh, just because there's, you know, it's like sort of the, what do you call it, the union of all of the uh, the people that are being followed on that server, you see all of them. So that's uh, kind of an interesting way to see a lot of stuff there as well. Um, and if you are a single user server, then that federated timeline is basically the same as your home feed, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Benoit says, federated timeline is unusable to me. There's a post each second. Yeah. Uh, Gun says Bram Mulinar is in the Emacs instance. Is that right? Or are we joking around? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, what else? Open home timeline with capital H, open local timeline with capital L. You can do that too. Let me turn off, uh, whoops. All right, capital L, it should be loading it up. All right, so Mastodon local. And then open notifications timeline. So you can check out your notifications as well with uh, capital N, which is kind of nice. So, um, Let's see, what else? Uh, mentions only notification timeline. Like if you only want to see where you've been mentioned in uh, in posts recently, let's check out, take a look at that. So it's, it's really nice actually. Like you can do a lot of stuff inside of Emacs. You can, you can browse posts on your server in, in Emacs. You can reply to things. Um, uh, and you can also make your own posts, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, Simply Peter says, I am the newest follower. I am famous. Well, I guess so. This, this channel is not so big. Uh, let's see. Uh, you is update current timelines so if you want to refresh things. Uh, open thread for toot under point. So if there is a, like a C. What about this one? I'm going to uh, hit capital T. And let's see if it opens up the information about that. Okay, it's not working on that one. Let me fix this ERC mode thing. I think I have something in uh, Emojify mode. I did something dumb in my uh, setup.el config. So let me just fix this really quick. Set you, or what is it? Remove hook. Uh, Emojify mode hook ERC mode. All right, let me refresh this. Okay, it's gone now, good. Um, now, now it should be fine. Let me go here then. I'm going to go on this post by uh, by Aaron and do, what was it? Um, capital T. Is it loading? Let's see. 
Okay, here it is, cool. So you can see like the specific thread if you only wanna see one thread of posts and you can reply to it here, I think, which is pretty cool. Is there like an R for reply? Uh, is it lowercase r? Where are you? Reply. Yeah, lowercase r. So you can do lowercase r. You can even vote on polls, which is kind of cool. Uh, PCAL says, remove, ho remove hook as a command, by the way. You can meta exit. Yeah, it, it only has been a command as of 27, so I keep forgetting that. Uh, delete your own tweets, your own posts. Uh, you can delete and redraft. That's pretty useful if you want to edit it. Um, you can edit your own posts. You can do everything, basically, which is kind of nice. So anything you would want to do in a graphical client for the Fediverse, uh, or specifically Mastodon, I guess, uh, you can do from here. Now, um, the Mastodon toot command will give you a uh, nice little buffer that gives you a place to type out your message. The thing I really like about this is it also let, allows you to create polls. You can attach media like uh, images or videos. Uh, you can change visibility. You can toggle content mornings. You can put in emojis. Um, you can do anything that you would do in another client. So uh, the way that I would like to use mastodon.el is if I'm working on something, I wouldn't necessarily wanna go to the web client to distract myself. <laughs> Uh, by looking at the posts that are happening in the client, I would want to just use the Mastodon toot command to pull up this panel, write out whatever I'm thinking, and maybe attach like an image, maybe a screenshot or something, or a video clip, and then make the post from here. So, um, so I'm just going to write this out really quickly. And you can use Control C, Control C to send your message. So I'll just hit Control C, Control C. And then that's been. Uh, uh, tooted out now and if I go to uh, my feed I can see that it's here so it's instantaneous where it got posted um, you know it's really straightforward really solid interface uh, it's one of the better interfaces that I've seen for a social media app inside of uh, Emacs uh, there's been twittering mode for a long time in Emacs and I never really liked it I felt like it was just kind of weird to use but maybe that's just me also um, you know, Twitter doesn't really want people to use their API anymore. That might change in the near future, but um, at least they, they had stopped encouraging people to use their API. So uh, it's not really as well supported to use Twitter in Emacs as it is to use uh, ActivityPub or Mastodon, etc. And that's part of the reason why I want to do this stream is to sort of point out that if you wanna have a, a set of tools that you use, a set of services that you use that are better for you and the workflow that you want to put together in tools like Emacs, et cetera, uh, ActivityPub is the solution for social media, bar none. I mean, if you want to interact with other people, talk to people about Emacs, Geeks, any other topics that you like, and you wanna do it from within the comfort of Emacs, this is the way to do it. Mastodon.el is a great, a great client. And there's plenty of places to talk to people about the kind of stuff that we're into. Um, and also, you know, it's very easy to, to hack on, you know, Emacs list packages. So you could contribute to mastodon.el to make it better in any way you like. Um, someone had mentioned um, uh, uh, Nicolas Roger, or Roger, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, his uh, work on mastodon.el, he's, he's sort of making an alternative timeline layout that looks way better. This looks way better than what we see right now inside of the mastodon.el package. And I have a feeling that this is gonna end up getting merged into the package. So if you want a social media experience in Emacs that actually looks pretty nice, uh, this may be coming soon. I hope it's coming soon anyway. So um, definitely keep an eye out for that. So Gun says, just flip Twitter the bird. Um, Fade says, does Mastodon.el cause your Emacs to block? I don't think so. I think it must be using, well, no, that's not true, actually. I know there's an async mode that will uh, pull new posts live, but I think it might actually block Emacs to do the request for a given page of the post. So not exactly sure about that, but if anybody knows in the chat, uh, let me know. I, like I said, I haven't been using this particular client as much because the web client has been so good that I've just been keeping the web client open all the time. Anyway, uh, what else did I want to say here? 
yeah, so like I said, that, that package is in uh, active development and things are probably gonna be changing uh, as time goes on and as pa Emacs packages change, you know, variables get renamed, functions get renamed, or maybe they take different numbers of, numbers of parameters. So just keep an eye out. If you get any weird errors whenever you update the Mastodon package, just go check out whether there's any, been any changes recently. All right, so um, interesting use cases for ActivityPub. I didn't write this out, but I wanted to point out a few things that I've seen um, in the last couple of days as I've been doing more research that I think are really exciting. Uh, first of all, there is a live streaming uh, platform called uh, Owncast. So uh, if you want, ever wanted to run your own Twitch or your own YouTube live streaming service or whatever, uh, this is a very good free and open source software platform for doing so. Um, it basically allows you to have your own site that you can do a live stream like this one. And it, the more and more I learn about it, the more I kind of want to use it myself. So you may see System Crapper streams on this type of platform at some point in the future. But uh, the, the thing that I wanted to point out here is that Owncast actually has integration with ActivityPub where um, you can follow a live streaming site by following the account of the site. It actually has its own built-in ActivityPub server where you can follow that account so that anytime the account goes live, it actually sends out a, a post that you can see. And not only that, you can it has a, its own built-in live chat where you can authenticate to the chat using your ActivityPub account on whatever instance you're on. So there's like a lightweight protocol for authentication. Basically, all it does is you tell it what your account name is, it sends you a message on your server with a six digit code and you go put that code in and then you're authenticated basically to the, the live chat. So if you go into the docs, uh, let's see, activity or chat, let's see, where is it? Chat moderation, no. Chat authentication. Um, there's there's one method called indie auth, but there's also Fediverse authentication. Um, this sort of gives you clues into what might be possible in the future. If you have an account on a Fediverse instance, you could authenticate with that account in other places online that aren't even social media sites. You could use it to authenticate potentially to like a source code hosting site, like let's say uh, Codeberg, which I'm not sure if they do anything like that, but I imagine in the future they will. Um, a, a place like this, obviously, or anywhere else. Even more websites are, are going to start having support for ActivityPub. Like we've heard this week that Tumblr is going to start having ActivityPub support. Maybe even Flickr. Other you know main major websites may have that. So having an account on an instance actually gives you a lot more power than you might think because instead of having some proprietary site be your authentication source, maybe you can have your own uh, Fediverse instance be your authentication resource and someone can come to your site that you host yourself to authenticate you. So no longer do you need to worry about it being Twitter verified. You are verified by your account that you have that you may even host yourself, which I think is kind of awesome. Um, so um, to me, this own cast thing is, is pretty cool. So it gives me even more motivation to have my own own cast server for doing uh, system crafter streams, flux harmonic streams, et cetera, because instead of having the main chat of the stream be on YouTube or Twitch, it could be on our own website where you log in with your Fediverse account instead. And then you can interact as yourself, as your Fediverse account inside the chat. And um, since we would have our own sort of API for that, we could do a lot more interesting things for interaction with the stream, et cetera. So I think there's a lot of really interesting things that we can uh, can do with this in the future. I, I don't know if I'll have time anytime soon to set something like this up, but I do wanna try it at some point. And if anybody else in the chat or who's watching the recording has done this, definitely let me know. Uh, ben, Benoit says we could use Matrix for chatting. Definitely could use Matrix for that too. So let me uh, post a link to that. Um, also, I don't know if you've heard about PeerTube, but PeerTube is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, video platform that is also decentralized, much in the same way as um, ActivityPub social media sites are uh, decentralized, where you can host a PeerTube instance and um, you can post videos there, but anybody who comes and watches the videos on your site is actually, it's almost like BitTorrent on the web where they are also sort of streaming the content of your videos to other people who are watching the site. So 
Uh, I'm, I'm not fully like up to date on how all that, that works, but this is an alternative to sites like YouTube if you wanna have a sort of free and open source way to host videos yourself. Now, the reason why I mentioned this is because they also have um, integration with ActivityPub for comments. So you can use your ActivityPub account to comment on videos that are posted. And I think those comments actually show up as threads on, uh, on a, an ActivityPub server. So people can see you commenting on a video and they can actually interact with that on oh, a site like Mastodon or any other uh, Fediverse server instead of having to go directly to the, the video site to do that. So some really interesting implications there for sharing uh, content. You could post a video to uh, the Fediverse and have comments on that post be actually going back to the website and have it show up in both places. So they mentioned ActivityPub here. Uh, let's see, you can allow a PeerTube user from Mastodon. Um, you could follow a PeerTube user from Mastodon and even comment on a PeerTube hosted video directly from your Mastodon account, which I think is pretty awesome. Now, where is the documentation for that? I wanna to link to that. Help. Read the documentation. Uh, activity pub, here we go. So the docs for that are here. So, it's basically its own activity pub server implementation where you can do things like liking things, you know, following blah blah blah, all the stuff that you would do on a normal activity pub implementation, I believe. So uh, instead of subscribing to a channel by going to YouTube, logging in with your YouTube account and clicking subscribe, you could actually subscribe to a channel using your Metaverse account instead. Um, so that would be a much better way to follow. Um, videos that are getting posted by a channel that you like. So may also be the case that at some point I'll have a video site for system crafters that where I post videos and then you can get updates about those videos directly to your Fediverse account instead of having to like open the YouTube app and, and hit the bell to hit the, get the notifications and all that rigmarole. So I feel like there's a whole ecosystem that can be built on top of ActivityPub where we can just sort of get out of the sort of major monolithic social and content sites and use something that we actually have a lot more control over. Uh, uh, Philip says, uh, if, as far as I know, videos on PeerTube as video objects on ActivityPub. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, Benoit says, also su subscribing is RSS. Yeah, you can also do RSS here as well. Uh, Glenn says, I just checked and yes, mastodon.el does block when pulling new pages. So that's just a couple of instances of things that um, that you might find interesting that you can do with ActivityPub. Um, also that maybe give you some ideas, like if you're the type of person who likes to write your own code, maybe you would wanna write your own integrations with ActivityPub, maybe write a bot, maybe write a new site that uses ActivityPub somehow, uh, and just sort of strengthen the whole ecosystem by, by doing that. Um, I think in 2023, I wanna really ramp up my usage of stuff like this because I wanna see how far we can take building a community like System Crafters, like Flux Harmonic, et cetera, on the sort of decentralized federated web instead of uh, depending on sites like YouTube and Twitch and Twitter, et cetera, because we don't really need them. I mean, it, as long as we just have people coming to use these other sites, we don't really need the big sites anymore. You could have a Twitter account just for like doing big announcements, maybe if you're a company or maybe if you have existing people who don't move to uh, the Fediverse. But the day-to-day -day activity, I think, will probably largely be in the Fediverse and other things related to the Fediverse. At least that's the way that I'm going to do it. So if you want to see the things that I am doing, definitely follow me on the Fediverse instead of on Twitter because I'm not going to be posting on Twitter probably at all uh, unless it's maybe announcements of, of new streams or videos on the System Crafters Twitter account. I might not even do that because I don't really get that much like feedback there anymore anyway, because I think a lot of the people who were there are now here. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Benoit says, uh, ActivityPub is gateway to using the tools you want to get access to messages and medias, definitely. So part of me uh, doing this stream today was to motivate all of you to want to get involved. And I, many of you who are here right now, I've already seen you on Mastodon today and previous days, like we've interacted. So you are the people that are already there for the most part. Uh, the people who we, we need to 
tell about tell the people who need to, to tell about this are the people who are still on Twitter. So if there's anything that you do on Twitter or other social media sites, it should be trying to encourage people to try out Mastodon. I say Mastodon because it's the thing that will be most familiar, even though it's not perfect. Um, at least they can get started and then maybe understand what the value is and then start using it more frequently and eventually, you know, not really need a site like Twitter anymore because Twitter is just a bunch of noise. I mean, it's like a slot machine where you open the app, you start pulling down from the top to get the latest posts and you get your sort of dopamine rush from seeing all the random crap that the algorithm wants to feed you. It could be nice for some things, but I really feel like I end up getting lost more in Twitter with all the stuff that it tries to show me than I get actual value out of it. And that's the point. They want to keep your attention there. They want to keep you there longer so that you see more ads and that big brands can advertise to you through their own accounts uh, more frequently. So I don't really, really want to be involved in that anymore. I'd rather be in a place where we're trying to build community. And this is a better place for that, in my opinion. And since so many of you have joined there now, I don't really feel like we need to be on Twitter anymore. So definitely try to tell more people about using Mastodon or ActivityPub in general, especially if there are people who are like-minded, who like free and open source software, who are maybe Linux enthusiasts, Emacs enthusiasts, or programmers, or just techie-driven people in general. Because the more and more people who move over to federated protocols like ActivityPub, um, the better off we'll all be because we won't have to depend on the big monolithic corporatized uh, social media platforms. Freddie says, did you read the tweet? Lex Friedman switched to VS code after a lifetime on Emacs. Eh, Lex can do whatever he wants to do. I mean, I, I heard a little bit of his rationalization for doing that to each their own. If he wants to use VS code, I'm not going to say he shouldn't use VS code. You know, it doesn't really matter to me what he uses because he's not telling me what I'm using. So, Whatever I'm using is what it matters to me. Uh, gender Selection Box says, you'll create a post on Twitter linking to the Fediverse place. Seems interesting. Well, I have already done that, but I'm going to do it again for sure. Uh, let's see. What did Benoit say? Oh, Matrix supports uh, live streams too, but it's a bit choppy. Uh, greater than 480p. Yeah, live streaming yourself um, or on some other platform is difficult. Speaker says, does uh, VS Code have a Mastodon client? Probably by this point. I mean, you can pull in like a web page into a pane on VS Code. So they could just pull up the Mast Mastodon UI there if they wanted to. So it's not too hard for VS Code since it's, an, it's a web-based or electron-based application. Jeff says, will you be moving Discord to Mastodon? Well, I have been considering for a while moving the Discord to Matrix or IRC or XMPP. Uh, as many of you who use the Discord might have noticed, I hardly ever show up on the Disc System Crafters Discord. That's mainly because I don't really want to use Discord. Uh, I just haven't really like made a formal decision yet to, to migrate people. And I didn't want to disrupt people who are there and getting value from being there. Fade says IRC. Yeah. IRC is possible, but I feel like Matrix is a little bit more uh, friendly for people who are used to Discord. But I honestly don't want to use Matrix because Matrix is complicated. And if you wanted to host your own in instance, it's not so easy. So I don't know. IRC is great. And uh, if you've got uh, new tools like, uh, what is it? Uh, Gojuma? Is that what it's called? No. Ah, what is it? Uh, Source Hut IRC Bouncer. So Source Hut uh, has their own IRC Bouncer, which you should use if you use IRC. It's actually really useful. There's an underlying technology, uh, Soju and Gamja. So Soju is the IRC Bouncer that they use that uh, one of the people who is employed by Source Hut wrote this. It's a IRC V3 IRC Bouncer, and they've got a web client that builds on top. Actually really good. Um, this might be something that would make it easier for someone to use IRC, especially if they have a source HUD account that they're paying for, they can use the IRC bouncer and have a, a more consistent experience. There's a, they also have a, an Android client that works pretty well. Where is it? They don't mention it here. Uh, the point being IRC is doable. Um, and it's a bit more 
aligned with System Crafters principles than Matrix, but it's also harder for people to uh, use IRC, I think. Jeff Bowman says, maybe switching to Riot. Yeah, well, the Element client, I think, maybe is the better one these days. I'm not sure. Uh, is Riot still around? Bayed says, let's stick with IETF protocols. Yeah, let's just use TCP IP. Let's telnet to each other's uh, uh, sockets and just, you know, send uh, plain text streams to each other. I'm obviously being sarcastic. And I'm not making fun of what Fade said. I'm just, you know, we're just having fun here. Matrix equals Riot. Well, not exactly, is it? Riot is the... Um, the imp well, it was a client that was produced by the Matrix people. Uh, Fade is sending uh, links in the chat. Wow, so it's kind of interesting. Since RestreamBot is a moderator <laughs> in my chat, if anybody on Twitch sends a message with a link, it actually gets through because RestreamBot is a moderator. That's really silly. Oh, let me, yeah, the IRC protocol. Yes, that was a link that Fade sent. Okay, let me see if I can get, okay, there we go. Um, Benoit says, didn't I read that uh, ActivityPub is filing to be an IETF protocol? I don't know. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Riot is element rebranded. That is true. Thanks, uh, Savage Banana Soup. Okay, let's jump to see about that. Uh, Activity Pub IETF. Well, it's definitely W3C, uh, but it does seem maybe they have some activity for Activity Pub. I don't know what this is. Mercury Protocol, Activity Pub. What is this? Data updates to web browsers, okay. W3C, yeah, it is W3C. For sure. It, it already is, uh, what, what is the status? The status is, as a recommendation. I don't know what recommendation state is. What does it say? Anyway, other interesting protocols to look at here as well. But um, anyway, as as some of you may have seen, like I mentioned before, uh, one of the the authors and editors of the protocol, Christine Limmer Weber, was here earlier uh, chatting with us, which is cool. Maybe I'll have Christine on at some point to, to chat more formally about um, Activity Pub because she's got obviously a lot more uh, background and knowledge about what really it should be like. So. Uh, I think that would be a cool thing to do. I've always wanted to have people on the stream to chat, but uh, I'm just too lazy to set it up. I've talked to some people about it, and they probably wondered why I disappeared, because I just, I get lost. I got too many things going on at the same time. Ah, Christian, nice to see you. Yes, you're a little bit late. That's okay. Okay. So, anyway, um, that's all I really had I don't know if there's other stuff going on with Activity Pub at the moment, aside from the things that I mentioned here. But um, I really think that people should check out not just what Mastodon has done, but the other types of implementations that are being worked on for just the you know normal social media sites, um, like uh, for social media site implementations like Pleroma, GoToSocial, etc. Also. You know, these other things like Owncast and PeerTube, which integrate because when we have more tools, more platforms that can integrate with ActivityPub, it's going to start to get a lot more interesting and a lot more fun for all of us, especially if you can interact with the stuff inside of Emacs in a comfortable way. I mean, why wouldn't you want to use that if a lot of people that you like are there and then you get a lot of value out of it? So, ha, Peter, also fashionably late. Nice to see you, though. Um, Benoit says, next week's stream, installing Pleroma with Geeks. Well, it depends on whether, um, was it Elijah that said they were trying to, to package it? Let's see if Elijah can get it done in a week. Then maybe, maybe we'll see. I would like to install Pleroma. I think it'd be pretty fun. 
I don't know that I would want to host a an instance that other people join though. I thought about it, but I don't know. I, I'd rather just do my own thing, probably. Um, there was a list that I had somewhere. Did it get lost? I thought I had checked that in. Here it is. Okay, so let's take a look at this list real quick. On Wikipedia, on the Fediverse entry, they actually have um, a listing of Fediverse software platforms. This is stuff other than just social media sites, but they are things that uh, use different protocols like Diaspora. Remember Diaspora? Whenever they made a big stink back in whatever it was, like uh, 2010, 2012, they were like, oh, we're going to make the new Facebook. Uh, I don't really know what's going on with them now, but it sort of never really hit the mainstream. OStatus, which was another one that came before ActivityPub. I think that some ideas in Activ ActivityPub were based on the learnings from OStatus. But as you can see here, a lot of these have ActivityPub uh, implementations. So let's take a look really quick about like what else might be interesting here. One called Bookworm, which is book cataloging. Maybe that's like Goodreads or something. Let me uh, click on that real fast. Uh, Dave says, does Pleroma use a modern JS, JS tool chain? That's the biggest potential obstacle to Geek's packaging. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where they're hosting their code. I don't want to type the, the G website. Um, code. Contribute. Where is the link to your code? Installation guide. Whatever. GitHub. Pleroma. Mm, is that it? I don't trust that that's it. Maybe. Oh, it's a fork. There it is. Okay, they have their own uh, Git hosting site. That makes sense. It's a GitLab site. Uh, Christian says, isn't GNU Social obsoleted by Frenica? N actually not. GNU Social still exists. I actually went there the other day. I was just curious if people are using it, and they're using it. Um, there's the GNU Social Network. GNU Social.network. Join us. Click here. Oh, okay. They have various different instances there. So if you want to use something that's like GNU specific, that's using the GNU Social Protocol, you can do that. <laughs> Christian says, nothing in GNU dies. No, it just goes unmaintained forever. Um, so there's GNU social.net, etc. Anyway, you can look at that if you want to. What I wanted to do is take a look at um, maybe if we can find what their code looks like. Client applications. Is that just the. Never mind. But uh, if you want to use Pleroma, there's actually a list of, of uh, apps, including Tusky, that work with it. So that's that's a good place to look if you want to use a Pleroma instance. Uh, probably the installation documentation would be better for this. Prerequisites. So far, I'm not seeing Node.js which means that it might not be using NPM ecosystem, which would be better if it didn't. Yes, it's Elixir. That's uh, pretty surprising, right? It's calling for OTP, so it's the Erlang ecosystem. Um, yeah, it's definitely Elixir and, and Erlang, but I'm wondering where the uh, web front end is. Let's see, uh, .js. It could be using some kind of compiled to JS thing. Um, let's find some clues here. Config.exs. Uh, can we see... There's like file types. Issues. I'm like... GitLab's UI. I don't know what I'm doing here. Front-end code might be a different repo. That's a good point, actually. Let's take a look at their uh, top-level uh, Can I just look at your repos, please? I don't want to have to log in. Back. 
Oh, is it just in the Pleroma? Uh, yeah, okay. Here's the org. High performance web push, uh, whatever. Back end, front end. There it is. Pleroma FE. Cool. Good call. So, okay, here we go. Babel RC. You already know you're going down the rabbit hole when you see that. So yeah, probably this is gonna have a lot of stuff in there. Where's where's node modules? Is it here? Node. Yeah. Ah. Node underscore. Oh, they're using yarn. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, may not be so easy to package the front end because of that. But maybe you don't need the front end. But yeah. Uh, Maybe Geeks is a little bit out of the question for the front end, uh, for now at least. I, so there is Elixir in the Geeks repo. Yeah, back, back end definitely looks possible. I don't know if there was a lot of dependencies. Um, I'm not sure exactly how uh, Elixir dependencies are packaged in Emacs. Or if, 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 even if there's a build system for it, Elix. Yeah, I mean, Elixir itself is here, Erlang. There's a lot of Erlang libraries. Whoops. Anyway. <laughs> Fade says, the whole JS ecosystem is a hive of scum and villainy. Entropy is too damn high. Well, it is a mess. Def B says, can geeks do Wasm? I don't know. I think there's some um, Wazi. There's a Wazi thing for Rust. There's a lot of Wasm related Rust uh, packages, but I haven't seen um, anything like, there's not like a WASI implementation. It's like a system interface for WebAssembly. So maybe that would be cool if someone could get that package, but. Okay. Uh, I got a little bit sidetracked. Uh, where were we? We were in the Fediverse list. Uh, bookworm. What is that? Social reading and reviewing. So yeah, it's basically like um, Goodreads, but for the Fediverse, which is kind of cool. If you want to talk to people related to uh, books, you could do that. What else? Uh, microblogging, blogging, blogging, blogging. Funk Whale. Audio sound hosting. Maybe that's a um, uh, SoundCloud-like thing. I haven't seen this, so this might be pretty cool. Def B says, I look forward to when we can write all write front end in whatever lang we want. Yeah, that would be pretty nice. So yeah, this is like a SoundCloud for the Fediverse, which is pretty cool. You can start your own pod. Cool. Maybe I should uh, uh, copy these links into the show notes. And then what else did I have there? I had the bookworm. Let's copy that. Uh, B link. Go back. Okay. And let's see what else we got here. Drupal. Apparently Drupal or Drupal. That has some kind of activity pub uh, uh, implement, implementation. That's kind of interesting. Uh, GNU Media Goblin. I know that's another thing that uh, Christine has worked on before. Uh, it's basically like a media hosting site. I guess it's kind of like Plex, right? It's kind of like Plex a little bit for uh, media hosting. Or, oh, okay, it's a replacement for Flickr, DeviantArt, and or YouTube. Okay, cool. So just another uh, media site. And uh, let's see, what else? GNU Social, Link Aggregator. I've heard about this Lemmy. I think Lemmy is kind of like Reddit for the Fediverse. That's what I've heard. That's the blurb that I've heard. A link aggregator for the Fediverse. I don't know if that really means like Reddit, but oh, okay. Yeah, the UI is basically Reddit. So if you want something that's like Reddit for the Fediverse, I think this is um, something that you can take a look at. Uh, join a server. Let's see. There seem to be some servers for that. So uh, maybe kind of cool. There. Oh, I thought I saw an InfoWars <laughs> server. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that's not what I saw. Anyway, that's another thing you can take a look at that's related to this. I don't know if you can federate with your existing account on an ActivityPub instance, but that would be kind of cool if you could. Uh, something called Mastodon. Uh, Next Cloud Social, if you want to have social features inside of your um, file share 
stuff. Uh, PixelFed. That's actually kind of interesting. Um, it's like an image sharing website, but it's kind of nicely polished. It looks like a you know Silicon Valley startup kind of thing. So I don't know if this is an open source project. Okay, it has, it has source code available. But uh, that's kind of cool. I haven't actually used this, but you know it looks good enough that I would be curious to, to take a look at it. Uh, let's see, streams. Yeah, so a lot of you know replacements for things that we already know and use online. We have some Fediverse uh, implementation, which is kind of cool. Christian says, uh, PSA, NextCloud Social is still broken, neglected for years, only now picked up again. Yeah, now that there's heat on the metaverse, sorry, the metaverse, jeez, I shouldn't say that word. Um, the Fediverse, I guess people are more paying attention to these things again. Uh, Benoit says, I found that Mastodon has been filling the space as a Reddit replacement. Yeah, I don't like using Reddit, to be honest. I feel like uh, Reddit is just another one of those platforms that's trying to keep you around. Because I have Reddit installed on my phone, I keep getting notifications um, two or three times a day related to things that I've looked for on the internet. So apparently they've got tracking cookies that are following you around and they start sending you notifications on your phone um, to tell you about this stuff. Because I started getting a lot of notifications about Mastodon all of a sudden. Who knows why? So yeah. Also, Reddit as a whole is pretty toxic, so I just don't like to hang out there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. I hope that was enough of a explainer and motivator to get you to check out um, the Fediverse if you haven't already. I know a lot of you here already have, so maybe I'm just preaching to the, the crowd, the choir. Um, but I thought it was worthwhile to at least have a, a video about this since this topic is sort of uh, front and center on people's minds these days. If you know of Emacs users who have not yet joined the Fediverse, definitely uh, tell them about it. You can send them a, a, the, a link to the recording of the stream uh, or you know, just tell them to join and they'll see people talking. So th that would be good enough. But definitely uh, uh, you know, try to get more people to join because the more people are there, the more valuable it's going to be for everyone and the more they'll want to stay and not go back to places like Twitter. FB says, almost back to 1999. Download my executable. <laughs> I don't know what we saw for that, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to be doing that the whole thing. So uh, anyway, um, that's it. So uh, as a reminder, follow me on um, Mastodon, at least. You can follow me from any activity pub implementation, I believe. Uh, that's uh, fostodon.org slash at davidwill. Um, let me click myself here. Yeah, right here. At DavidWill at Fossadon.org. I also join the emacs.ch instance if you want a more Emacs focused instance. Uh, a lot of people there that you know from the community. Uh, does it say how many users it has now? Doesn't say how many users there are. I know there's a few hundred by this point. So you check the local feed. There's uh, quite a bit of activity going on here, which is great. I'm really happy to see it. Oh, there's there's us right now. Uh, so anyway, um, I had a lot of fun talking about uh, Activity Pub today. Hope, hopefully you did too. And if you're interested in hearing more about this or having you know more chats with people about uh, Activity Pub or maybe looking at looking at other implementations or figuring out how to install them in Geeks, etc. Uh, oh, 371. Thank you for pointing out what my eyes could not see as I was uh, scanning through. The Fediverse. Oh boy. I don't think I need that. I've eaten enough cheese the last couple of days with Thanksgiving. Um, so definitely let me know if you're interested in hearing more about this. But we'll be back to our regular scheduled um, Emacs slash Geeks related content uh, next week. So I need to start making some more videos. I really want to start making some Geeks Home videos because I, I think we're on the precipice of that starting to pick up a lot as well. So I, I kind of want to help kickstart that a little bit. So remind me. Just keep pinging me to make uh, Geeks Home videos because I need some motivation. Anyway, thanks a lot for being here, folks. Hope you all have a great weekend. Until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.